We have a pretty robust chore system. We have morning chores, afternoon chores, after dinner chores. The question is, but how, like, what are people doing? What are the chores that you're actually assigning? One of the habits that I'm working on is inspecting what I expect. So what that looks like is I have a certain time each day, 7.45, that I am checking our chore chart and saying, hey, have you done this? Okay, have you done that? And then I have the same habit that I'm working on for the afternoon. Now, everybody is doing their chores at a certain time because I'm saying, okay, it's chore time, but I still have some other responsibilities I want people to be working through. So the only way to do that is by having them take responsibility for themselves. So I'm gonna walk you through our chore station so that you can see what that looks like. So inside of our pantry is actually where I have our chore station. So I'm just gonna walk you through our chart. Here we have my chore station. And you'll notice I've got these nifty little guys that move back and forth. And this was my attempt to get our chore system a little bit more in order. So we're just gonna start with kind of what our chore system looks like in each day, and I'll break it down by age, who's doing what, and then I'm gonna leave a link to my current chore chart that I am referring to below so that you can snag what you need. So to start off, we had to switch to assigned days for laundry. So we have a girl's day and a boy's day. And we actually have two girl's days and two boy days, and then two days that mom gets to do laundry. And that has worked really well. The girls, there's three girls getting laundry done, there's three boys getting laundry done, and then there's my husband and myself and the baby on the other days. We do have a child assigned to take the laundry down on the assigned day, and then the other kids are supposed to fold and put their laundry away. So that part has not been amazing, but we're getting there. So then everyone has a before breakfast chore, and that is in addition to their normal hygiene, making your bed, getting dressed, fixing your hair, tidying up your room. We are working on orderliness and just the virtue of staying clean and keeping our spaces tidy. That is something that we have really lacked and I have loved the quality of life that it has afforded just honestly by making all of the beds each day. It feels like the house is cleaner <laughs> when the beds are made. Then each child has a morning chore and we just rotated our chores and they will have their chore for the next year. So I'm just gonna walk through the age of the child and what they're doing. Before breakfast, my 13 year old is, is servicing all of the vacuums in the house. We have three vacuums and then they just empty the bins, clean out the filters. If anything's broken, they let me know, that kind of thing. Then my 12 year old sets the table for breakfast and this was kind of like next level, again, making it feel like our home it's just, it really, again, it increases our quality of life to have the table set in, in a nice way with water and a napkin. It just makes it feel prepared. So then my 10 year old is dusting and he has a dusting rotation that he goes through throughout. It's mostly all of the downstairs and there's a couple spaces upstairs that he will dust one day a week. So each day of the week and that's seven days a week, he has a different location that he is dusting. My nine-year-old unloads the dishwasher. My seven-year-old goes through and wipes down the walls with a magic eraser. So I have different places that she is wiping down the walls all the time. There's always a need to wipe the walls on the stairwell. Um, on That's just people's little fingers just get all over it and looks really gross. Then around door frames, there always gets goo on there. Wiping the refrigerator and the dishwasher are other locations that need it on a regular basis, but she kind of moves around to the different ones based on how gross 
they are. Then we have an after breakfast chore and an after lunch chore. And I'm just gonna read the after breakfast chore because this will give you kind of the spirit for the types of chores we have. So my 13 year old after breakfast cleans up the baby and cleans up all his space and his mess. Then my 12 year old puts the food away and cleans the pan that was used to prepare breakfast. Then the 10 year old loads the dishwasher and wipes out the sink. This is key because the sink can start smelling disgusting if people aren't just cleaning it each day, actually after each meal. Then my nine year old sweeps the floors and makes sure to get under the table, in the kitchen, under the stool. I mean, there's kind of like a large area that he needs to make sure is clean. Then my seven year old wipes the stove. We have a gas stove, so it has this iron grate that you take off, spray and wipe. And that, again, this is happening every day, twice a day. <laughs> so that is staying clean. My five-year-old, her responsibility is to clear her own dishes, spray and wipe the table and put away the items that were used there. Then we have afternoon chores. <laughs> it's like we are always in chore mode. But honestly, each of these chore sessions take five to 10 minutes per child. It sounds like a lot when I'm reading it, but to actually get it done, it is you know a 15 minute, a five minute, a 10 minute chunk of time that everybody's doing an activity and I'm managing and helping and doing my own chores at that time. So it really helps keep the home in order. My older four kids have two afternoon chores and that is because when we moved into this home, there was just a higher, level of chores that needed to get done. So my 13 year old cleans the girl's bathroom and that includes cleaning the toilet, spraying and wiping just with vinegar, making sure there's toilet paper, sweeping the floor and hanging the towels. And then she also needs to vacuum her bedroom and the little girl's bedroom. My 12 year old is cleaning the boy bathroom and that includes wiping out the sinks, sweeping the floor, hanging the towels and making sure just things are generally tidy. And then he also sweeps out the kitchen. Now, not the where we sit, but just the main kitchen. That kitchen just is always getting gross. So we're sweeping it like four times a day. Then my 10 year old is tidying up our living room, making sure all the books are put away, all the toys. And then he's not really vacuuming it. He can if he wants to, but it's really just a tidy. And then he vacuums the boy's bedroom. And then there's a hallway there that the kids walk on. And then my 10 year old, he is cleaning the guest bathroom and making sure that there are toilet paper there. He's scrubbing the toilet. He's scrubbing out the sink and he's even scrubbing along the baseboards. And that's happening every day because that, you know, when you're homeschooling, you use your home so much more than if you're gone all day. Then his second chore is to wipe with a magic eraser in the hallway there around the gar garage door. There's just any manner of grubby hands that gets in there. Then my seven year old has one chore and she is to unload and then reload the dishwasher, which could technically be considered as two chores. I would say seven is kind of the turning point for a child being more fully capable of doing tasks like this one. And then my five-year-old takes a broom and dusts our wooden stairs and she does it each day. Then she has to either get a vacuum or a dust pan and she sweeps that up in the evening. Since I already went over our after breakfast chores, all of our after dinner chores are actually rotating and the kids came up with a scheme so that everybody has a fair um, job after meals. And then we added a new job this week and it has been like game changer, all these game changer chores. The game changer chore is that we have assigned days of the week for children to make lunch for us so that we can have a sit down lunch. What we had been doing is everybody kind of, it was a free for all and anyone could pick what they wanted for lunch. But this way, I really felt like we were missing the opportunity to sit down together for me to read something 
at a meal that was a little bit more teacherly and really just from a family culture perspective to be able to read something and have just a common experience at lunch. I had been seeing lunch as kind of my break and that I would get time to myself or to do whatever I wanted to do. As I was looking at our school schedule, I realized that I needed to get over that and that it was more important for us to have time together as a family at lunch. So that has actually worked beautifully this week. It has, I feel like, leveled up our quality of life. Our kitchen stays cleaner throughout the day. Um, my kids are more cooperative with one another and there's a lot more peace in the home around mealtime. And then also I've been able to read and we're going to be reading through one of our J.R.R. Tolkien books this semester. It's not one of the Lord of the Rings. It's another, it's like his short stories. So that's really fun and gonna be exciting. We've been reading some Beowulf and um, the retelling by Rosemary Sutcliffe has been phenomenal. So those are our chores. That's what's going on there. I will leave a link below so that you can check those out for yourself and make your own chore chart. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.